What's up guys, it's Chuck West of CW Brand Solutions. Back again for a continuation of our video about what design is. Defining design in general. Now, last time we spoke about how design is the conscious manipulation of visual elements for the purpose of conveying a particular message to a particular kind of person. What I want to do is show you an example from work that I've done in the past as to how I've designed certain things and how I have conveyed certain messages to certain kinds of people and show you that while it is a challenge, it is simple to do. Not always easy, but simple. Okay, I used to work for a place called the Dakota Jazz Club. It was up in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. And at the time, I was asked to design posters and flyers for all the artists who were performing at the club. So, you know, every night it would be a different artist. So here, I wanna show you how Dakota's brand remains the same regardless of what artist is performing, but at the same time offers a little something different for each artist to show the unique spirit of each artist. Now, I'm going to quickly show you three examples of posters that I designed, and then I will go back and go through them more slowly so that you can understand the difference between maintaining a solid brand and doing small deviations to show the uniqueness of each piece of collateral from that brand. So, Fiatta Brown, Honey Dogs, James Hunter. All three of these artists or groups are folks who performed at the club. Now, what do these three posters have in common? We see that each poster has a border, and it's the same size border for each poster. We see that the typography chosen for the name and for the date is the same. The colors are different, but the typeface for the name and the date of the show are all the same. What else is the same? Each poster has a real life photo of the artist. In other words, there's no illustration, no animation, nothing like that. Finally, in the corner or on the sides of each poster, we see a little trademark, I'll zoom in there, of the Dakota. Just given the information of the name of the club, where it is, and how you can contact them. See? And that there too. And finally, on this one as well. So, what are the common themes here? A border, common typeface with a name and date, realistic photography, and a calling card in the bottom right corner. So those four elements are what remain constant throughout this club's brand. That being said, what's different? Well, so, if we see a border, a common typeface, and some realistic typography and a calling card for each poster, what does that say about the Dakota Jazz Club's brand? When a picture has a border around it, it almost seems like a gallery. We're looking at a frame because when we buy pictures or posters and put them up on our wall at home, we often frame them. It's almost as though as we're looking at a gallery, a photo gallery or an art exhibit of the different kinds of artists that play at the club. So this suggests a particular kind of artistry to each person or group that plays. After all, we do refer to musicians as artists and we are looking at them as if they are a work of art, as if they are a framed image a framed poster that's gonna be up on our wall or up on the walls of the club or wherever you see them. Usually they'll be on the walls of the club. 
Then we have this sans serif typeface for the name and the date, as we said. What would this suggest about the club's brand? Well, the typeface itself is sans serif. What does that mean? That use, usually suggests a more casual brand, a bit, a bit informal, but you see the club itself is an establishment. It's a building. So this is the place where we're going to be seeing the artist. So this sans serif typeface could speak to the fact that we, are we will be going into a building to see these people. We will be going into an establishment to see the people who are going to perform. That's why having a human element to the typeface, i.e. a serif, is not necessary here, okay? We're just talking about going to a particular place. We're just talking about going to a particular place to see the people who are in the photo. So the fact that we have the photo of the artist already says that we don't need to necessarily add a human element to the Dakota Jazz Club chosen typeface for the name and the, and the date of the show. We see the people. We know that we're gonna be seeing humans and we need a little bit of contrast anyway, right? So we take a picture of artists, human beings, and then put a more casual, more corporate kind of typeface, more sleek kind of typeface without the serifs that are usually in that crafty artistry kind of typography. And we realize that, hey, this works. After all, we're gonna see in future videos that design has a lot to do with contrasting elements. The human versus the machine, the corporate versus the non-corporate. Different levels of contrast are part of what make a design interesting. Now, we have the ticket down here, or the, rather the calling card of the Dakota Jazz Club in the corner. Now, what that says about the brand is a bit more obvious because it gives us information about where we need to go to see these artists, what number we need to call, or what website or what email we can go to to contact the club. Now, if we zoom in, we see that the Dakota, the word Dakota, that's been written with a bit more of a human touch. It looks more like a well-crafted, yet not too serious script. In other words, you don't have to come to the club in a tuxedo. You can come casually. Although the Dakota itself, we see this script face here for the word Dakota. And then we see Dakota again over here. Now, granted, that can be a little bit confusing. Um, this is the information I was given to use for the club poster. But in retrospect, I see now that it would be a better idea to just go with one typeface here. After all, this typeface that you see, matter of fact, let me highlight this for you so you can see this better. This here, a bit more appropriate than this here, simply because the word Dakota above this piano here matches more to the type you see here. Sometimes we wanna match things up a little bit better. Now, speaking of contrast, let's look at how these different photos or how these different posters contrast from each other. An obvious sign of contrast is the difference in color, right? Now look what we've done here. Up here we got pink. Here we have a yellowish green. And then we've got a very pure orange. Now what was the point of using these different colors? The point is to bring out part of the emotion in the photo. When we have a design, we want to have elements that match with each other. We don't want to just have contrast all the time. So having a color for the border and this typeface here match up with a color that's already in the photo, as you can see, is a way to add a sense of unity to the design. 
we can't have everything be contrasty and opposite. Otherwise, there would be too much to look at and be looking this way and that way, and it would be hard to make sense of the thing. It would be harder to make sense of everything in the poster. We're matching up the poster's border and its typeface with an interesting element in the photo, right? Same thing here. This yellowish green, not completely on target, but very close to this yellowish shirt, a very bright color. And sometimes what we want to do is create colors that are lighter or darker versions of what we see in the photo. So this wood, this brown here that we see in the photo, we could have just made a brown border, but we want this artist to stand out. We want to make sure that the poster stands out. Okay, so also we want to think about what's being written here. Each poster has a little blurb about what the artist is like. So in the case of James Hunter, we have Hunter takes in a wide range of influences, including 50s piano based R&B and horn powered Motown gems. Okay, so we got variety. So if James Hunter plays a variety of music with a range of influences, what that means is we want to show more of a range in the color. Again, we're trying to communicate the message of the kind of music that the person makes. So having a little contrast between this border and this wood here, that's okay. Let's also remember that this wood brown can be considered a very, very dark form of orange. As orange gets darker, it looks more brown, doesn't it? So let's move forward with the different kinds of typography used to describe the style of music that the artist plays. British blues and soul, okay? Now, when we think Great Britain, what do you think of? We think of the English, we might think of kings and queens. <clears throat> we might think of class and formality. And that's what this typeface shows us with the, with the serifs here. In the case of the Honey Dogs, we got pop and rock. So we decided to use slab serifs instead of regular serifs because we don't necessarily need that human curve as, a, as most serifs have. We don't need things to be as curvy as with, we want things to be a bit bolder and really grab your attention. So we use a bolder type, something like Rockwell for pop and rock and for the haunting folk blues of Pieta Brown, we want to use a typeface that's a little bit more hollow. Because when we think of the word haunting, we think dead trees blowing in the wind, a very different kind of vibe, all right? So you see how this typeface, you can see through it, right? It's almost like, like the H here is almost like looking at two see-through pedestals letting the wind blow through it. And when things are dark and stormy, the wind blows in a very haunting way. So this is how we're using different elements to communicate to different people about the kind of music being offered here. So if you like haunting folk blues, here's how we create a vibe for you. If you like pop and rock, here's how we create a vibe for you, you know? Uh, bright colors, slab serif that's in that bold type that gets your attention. If we wanna do haunting folk blues, we'll do type that the wind can blow through as well as catch your attention with Pieta Brown's very pink bandana showing the femininity of it and adding that pink border as well. And in the case of James Hunter, showing a wide variety of styles, or another, a wide range of influences, and showing the variations in color to really communicate that message, all right? All the while maintaining things such as having a border, having that same typeface with the name and date of the concert, and having the calling card in the corner. Now, this kind of typography and imagery 
these graphic elements can be applied to everything from posters to tickets to postcards. One of the things we want to make sure we do when branding is to design in such a way that is simple enough to be transferred onto different kinds of media. But one thing we have to think about when designing is where are our designs going to be seen? If you have a logo, is it just going to be seen on a shirt or is it going to be seen on your social media? Is it going to be seen on a business card? It's going to be seen on the website, on an app. Where will it be seen? This is something to take into account when branding and designing. All right, well, that's just a general outlook of more brand and design advice and how to show through example what design really is. Again, I said it last time, I'll say it a second time. The conscious manipulation of visual elements to craft a certain message for a certain kind of people. This can be done through color, typography, and a whole bunch of other things as well. We'll be getting more into that in the videos to come. As always, I'm Chuck West with CW Brand Solutions. Take care.